Um, I'm going to touch on a few things here um, about your finances and career and things like that. But generally, no news is good news in that matter, in, in that front. So um, let me just, you know, for those who might be concerned, let me just uh, touch a little bit on that. And then let me just go through the image that I saw when I shuffle the cards out. And then we'll go from there, okay? Um, because I feel like, I hope you guys have had a really good month in January um, because I feel this is a continuation of that, okay? The energy is very buoyant, okay? Um, I feel like it's definitely a continuation because I feel like there's a lot of light-hearted, airy type of energy coming through for the month of February. So I feel you're going to be quite happy, okay? I don't see like heavy burdens and things like that. And so I feel that it is going to be relatively a good month as well. So let me touch on a few things. Um, first of all, we have here the King of Pentacles, okay, King of Crystals. And this is pretty much being in a situation where financially you've made it, okay? You're able to take care of yourself. You have disposable income. You can, like, um, have enough money to do recreational things, taking a trip, going out, um, going to the movies, going out dining. You don't have to nickel and dime yourself. So this is a state of financial prosperity for many of you. And I feel like the, the work environment, it is very harmonious at this point. It's also very stable. So I feel that you're settling in, okay? Like you're you're able to, um, you don't have to worry like when is the other shoe going to drop? When am I going to get laid off? When am I going to, um, you know, uh, am I going to be able to make the bills? Am I going to be able to pay all the bills or pay all the expenses? I don't feel you are in dire strait in any way when it comes to your financial footing. But, um, you know, once again, this is a general reading and a lot of people are watching this and we also have cross watchers who are watching this and we have like people who might be especially I'm feeling um, Scorpio moon people in particular I feel that your finances and your financial standing and your professional life it is very solid it's very golden and I feel that you're making quite a bit of money okay um, and the reason that I say that, in particular, Scorpio Moon is, we have here underneath it is the Six of Cups, which I generally associate astrologically, it is, is uh, Sun in, I'm sorry, Moon in Scorpio. And so right on top of that with this King of uh, Pentacles, it's indicative of stability, okay? Having a lot of financial abundance, having a lot of financial stability where you don't have to save up for a rainy day. You can spend all you want, but, you know, your bank account is not depleted, okay? So it's like making a lot more money than you're spending. A lot is coming, uh, a lot more is coming in than is going out. So this is a really, really good space to be. And for those of you whose finances or job prospects or even, you know, career projects and, and things like that, if things have been a little bit shaky, I feel like the end of the um, February time frame, we're going to transition into a lot more financial stability. So I just want to put that out there because um, I do want to relay the image that I saw here um, that came through, okay? So I don't know if there are a lot of people who are gamers, okay? But I saw an image of a video game. And uh, I cannot, for the life of me, remember the name of the video game. But it basically involves this boy. He's a, a warrior. He looks very young. And uh, he, there's a girl. She's like in spirit form. So she's kind of see-through and translucent. And so throughout the game, he has to rescue her. Okay? So throughout the game, he has to rescue her. And um, he's a warrior. He, he's uh, athletic. So he's able to climb over cliffs and, and jump and things like that. But when he's with her, he has to help her down the cliff because, you know, she's not strong. Like, she's not as strong as he is. She's not used to it. I think she might have been a princess, too. But it's like a, a role-playing game, and it's an RPG game, and um, that's all I remember from it. But when I saw that image, I was thinking about that video game. And so he jumps down into the cliff, and then he has to kind of like catch her when she jumps, or he has to like kind of like lower her onto the ground. So there's a series of like maneuvers that he's doing, and then all along the way, he's helping her. Okay? So... 
when I first saw this, um, I was thinking about, you know, uh, one person being very able to do something and another person is not. So, but contrary to what we would associate with like a codependent relationship, I feel like this is a very caring, nurturing type of a connection where somebody is very considerate of the other person's needs, okay? And uh, I feel like there might have been parts in the game, I, I believe that she's uh, showing him where to go. So they're, they kind of like, it's a symbiotic relationship. One person is lacking in something and the other person makes up for it. Okay, so it's like when one person's not able to do something, the other partner steps up. So I feel like there is a lot of mutual trust, a lot of like, I trust you enough to let you lead the way. Okay, I trust you enough to put my life in your hands. I trust you enough that if I know if I jump down this cliff, you're going to be at the bottom to catch me. And, you know, as a fixed sign, okay, um, you, uh, Taurus, Leo, and uh, Aquarius, as a fixed sign, we're very, very self reliant. We pride ourselves on our independence and being uh, able to take care of ourselves, being self sufficient, not needing another person, and especially we it makes us feel really uncomfortable to put our lives in somebody else's hands, right? Because we know ourselves really well. We know that our energy is fixed. When we say we're gonna do something, we always follow through. And we don't trust a lot of people for that uh, in that regards because you know things change people change and so i feel throughout your life many people have gravitated towards you like friends family members lovers uh, because of your stability because you are that anchor when you say you're going to do something they know you're going to follow through and then they always like the, the people might not have been completely 100% either physically stable, emotionally stable, or even financially stable. But you're like that rock. You're like that, that really stable fixture that is constantly in the landscape. And I feel for many of you, um, they impose themselves upon you. So it's like your experience is colored by a series of uh, relationship patterns and cycles where the people that approach you, they, they crave your stability because they did not have the stability in themselves. And so you were constantly, you know, um, again, like without knowing, drawing them in. Or maybe they just, you know, drew, stuck, like, um, they, they were sending out distress signals and I feel like it stuck and so they were drawing you to them. And so whatever the situation is, it was like, you know, in the past, I do feel a series of um, codependent relationships where you guys were always the pillar of strength and stability for a, a partner, a parent, a sibling, friends even. And if the, when, when the situation was reversed, when you're not able to do it, they were not able to be there for you. And so I feel like, you know, it was codependent in the past and it, it was like one person shoulder the responsibility of, of the relationship okay and I feel you know in in any relationship right it's really nice to feel wanted and needed right to be able to take care of another person but at the end of the day if it goes on for years and 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 decades and it, if it's like unchecked and if it's never reciprocated, who's going to take care of you? You're giving all of yourself, all of your energy, all of your resources, every piece of yourself to, you know, that relationship partner, that, uh, that, that situation. And then on days when you could not no longer give or on days when you're not, you, you're not feeling well and you have to step down, no one has really stepped up. And you're starting to realize that, you know, through the friendships, through the, the family relationships, through the love relationships even. Um, I feel like nobody was able to match the level of, the, uh, of devotion that a Scorpio is capable of giving, okay? That's just a fact. Um, the Scorpio people are very, very deep. And um, you guys, 
it, I feel like emotionally, the depth of your emotion is runs very, very, very deep. And at times, it can really scare you. And especially for those of you, Scorpio Moon people, you feel things very deeply. And I feel almost like when you're in a relationship, you want to like just wrap yourself up with the other person, melt, like melt together, become one. And it can feel a little bit scary for the other person, okay? And then for the Scorpio Sun, um, I feel like you you wanted to feel wanted and needed and desired and you know and so you do put up with a lot in relationships but i do sense it was very tiring it was taxing on you emotionally okay because like rather than going through your life like what am i going to do um where do i want my career to to head towards where do i want to live where do i want to buy property where do i want to uh, get a house or where do i want to you know settle down and retire uh where can i invest my money As, like all of the energy that you should have expended taking care of yourself planning for your future planning out your life making these important decisions and really mulling it over, doing research, all of your waking hours are then focused on that codependent relationship. Does that make sense? So I feel like not only does it take from you energetically in the here and now, but it takes from you as well in the future because all of your, your, your focus and your attention and the scope of everything you're dealing with is wrapped around the other person. Are they okay? Are they okay without me? Are they going to be okay tomorrow when I'm you know at work? Are they going to be able to take care of themselves? So I feel like energetically you have, um, you, you might not have realized how it affected you long term and how it affected you physically. Does that make sense? So, all of your energy is uh, was like siphoned off, okay? And every waking moment, I feel like you were concerned about somebody else. And then, you know, when, when let's say you're in your 30s, you're in your 40s, and when all of your friends, when all of your coworkers are thinking about, you know, saving up for a property, saving up for a wedding, saving up for a new car, say, um, progressing in their career, and even like investing so that they can, you know, have a really cushy retirement, your energy was not focused on these real life important decisions. And so I just want you to understand that it's really taken from you further into the future a lot more than you realize. And I hope that message, you know, kind of sinks in because I feel that you need to draw back and I feel that you need to plan things out long term. Okay? And so I feel like there was, you know, a series of toxic uh, codependent relationships in your past. Moving into this phase right now, the shoe's on the other foot. So for once, you're meeting somebody who's very willing to reciprocate. You're meeting somebody who, when you step down, they're able to step up. And it feels to me like, you know, like the ground is shaking from under you for a, a little bit. And so when we're so used to being that anchor and all of a sudden somebody else is, you know, uh, carrying that mantle, we're just like, well, what do I do now? You know, I've always been the caretaker. I've always been the decision maker. I've always been the one that other um, pers the, the other person relies on. And now the other person is taking over that role. Who am I? So a little bit of a, a, an identity crisis here. For a few of you who have always taken care of other people and now you're in a position where you can kind of coast, you can take it easy because your partner is really stepping up and it feels a little bit unsettling, it feels a little bit scary and in some ways you're just like, wait a minute, can I really trust this? Can I really trust that, you know, this is not just a, a temporary thing that they're pulling? Like three months from now when, you know, the puppy love or the infatuation wears off, are they going to turn nasty and sour? Or, you know, 
how long like it's almost like it's too good to be true how long is this gonna last for me can I depend on this into my old age is it gonna be like is there a time limit is there an expiration date is it going to be five years ten years and then I'm on my own so I feel like because we're so self-sufficient or because you guys are aiming to have aimed have worked at being very self-sufficient that it's hard for you to be anything but it's hard for you to take it easy it's hard for you to trust that if they're no longer in the picture you know do I need to relearn rewire my brain to be self-sufficient to take care of myself again and so what I do feel here is um, a little bit of a identity crisis that you guys are having because once again you know when you are um, in relationships I do feel that you guys get very wrapped up in it and uh, when you have a specific uh, you know skill set as well when you're uh, when you do something you tend to be very very good at it and that's what uh, fixed signs are really about um, they, they practice their craft they hone their craft and they aim to be the best right and so if someone tells you wow you're really dependable you worked hard at it you know it, it didn't just happen overnight it's not like a character trait it just like you, you you worked hard at it because that was important to you and so it becomes a part of your identity and then now that you don't have to you know be on time be punctual be dependable it's like a part of that identity is shifting and you're trying you're finding yourself trying to catch it and I feel like in this situation the universe is pretty much telling you you know take it easy take it easy okay all that intensity is um, I feel like is misdirected and I feel that the advice here is take it easy you're in good hands okay so going back to that image that I saw um, one person helping another um, climbing up cliffs climbing up mountains as well as uh, descending cliffs and descending mountains so there is definitely either a, uh, a journey a voyage that you and another person are fixing to embark on okay so first of all the cards are just echoing the same theme we have here the lovers and um, underneath it, it says choice and trust, okay? So there's definitely a love relationship that is blossoming, thriving, or at least I feel like love is coming for you, okay? And this is, I feel, a very uh, strong spiritual connection between two people, okay? A spiritual connection doesn't mean that we have to get along. It just basically means like a lot of the times when we have uh, ideals or um, things that we believe in or like um, preferences even we're very much in alignment like we can agree on a lot of things we can even agree on the big things and the little things and so living together working together traveling together and you know spending the rest of your life together it, it's um, it's harmonious okay so this is pretty much about um, finding your kind of like your soulmate your twin flame finding somebody who is a lot like you and finding somebody who is willing to explore this new territory with you okay this is a very playful card so it's uh, contrary to the um, the right away traditional right away deck with the man and the woman and the angel this card to me indicates um, a situation where it's very playful there's a lot of passion too but then I feel like in the spirit of exploration what is lying what's lying ahead of us I feel like if anything if you were to travel if you were to go anywhere if you were to explore new territories if you were in a strange environment this is somebody you want by your side okay they're um, they know how to survive they know how to get by they know how to um, I feel like you know they, they don't mind getting their hands dirty Scorpios I've mentioned before out of all the signs, okay, you and Aries and um, Capricorns, you, Aries, Capricorn, I feel like, let me see, Sagittarius sometimes, it depends with Sagittarius, but I feel like you and 
especially Capricorn. You and Capricorn, I would say more than any of the other signs. You don't mind getting your hands dirty. If something needs to be done, you're not going to sit there and, you know, uh, keep scores and like, um, you know, tit for tat, like, well, I did it last time. Why don't you do it this time? If something needs to be done, you roll up your sleeves and you get things done, okay? A lot of people can be very petty. It's like, you know, I did it last time. I don't want to do that. That's dirty. Why don't you do that instead? Okay? And a lot of people can be very calculating, even with the people that they love, to the point where it's like keeping scores. But I feel like with the uh, Capricorns and with um, Scorpios, you don't do that. Okay? Whatever that's hard, no one wants to do it, and it needs to be done. It needs to be done, right? So you roll up your sleeves, you get your hands dirty, and you get it done. And so I feel like you found a partner that is very similar to you, where they don't sit there, and they tr don't try to pawn off the, the, the yucky stuff on you. You know, they, they get things done, okay? And so this is kind of like your ride or die, this is somebody who is um, who's going to take care of you to your old age. This is somebody who's like, you know, when you're no longer young and attractive and, you know, uh, fit, like they're not going to leave you. If you're no longer um, have a full bed of hair, if you're no longer, you know, um, youthful, they're not going to leave your side. So I feel like you have a really strong connection here where it's a ride or die type of a relationship. And I feel that there isn't anything that can, you know, shake or, or um, shake this, the foundation of this relationship. I feel like it is very strong and it is very solid. Okay, so let me talk about your fears, okay? Because um, it's coming out very strongly. So you have some insecurities regarding this relationship. You trust the other person. So your insecurities, once again, is not about the other person. The insecurities are internal. So let me talk a little bit about that. So... It might be uncomfortable, but I feel like it needs to be brought up, okay? Because it, I, I can feel it. So, this is your energy here. We have here the Queen of Cups, okay? So, I look at this as somebody who's been in one place for way too long, okay? The, um, the environment around her, it's like she's got um, barnacles growing on her, okay? Um, they're like seashells, cr crustaceans, and like barnacles. And in this environment, it's like the, the, the tree, like the, uh, the seaweeds, the plants, um, the moss, whatever, the algae, they're starting to bloom, okay? So it, it indicates to me that you've been in one place for too long, okay? Um, what I feel is there's a lot coming in for you and once again you know you're 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 unable to budge okay this is a very heavy animal right it has to kind of like waddle waddle down the side of the rocks or down the the surface in order to get back into the water okay and so it's just sitting there waiting 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 but not really acting and so while something is coming in for you, I just feel like you're looking at it very skeptically, okay? And underneath that, on the shadow end of it, this is like your, your shadow side, and this is like the, these are the things that I want to talk about. You have a, a fear that by relying on another person, it's going to make you very vulnerable, either emotionally dependent on them, financially dependent on them, or even like um, you feel like this is a, a the arrival of this person might also signify the departure of this person. Okay, which basically means that you know, well, they're here today, but like you know, when when things get rough or when times get tough, are they going to be around? And so you've lived your life being the caretaker, being self sufficient. And now you don't know how to be anything else but. And 
as much as you trust the other person, you're not really sure if they have a limit, you know. Am I going to be too much of a burden for them? Am I going to be too dependent on them? Am I being too needy? Am I being too, you know, um, insecure in this relationship? Are they going to get tired of me? Are they going to get bored? Are they going to be okay taking on this role and these responsibilities? For, you know, for the rest of time. Is this relationship really going to stand the test of time? So, you know, what if, like, I need to get down that cliff and I'm not able to? Are they going to extend a helping hand? Or are they just going to get sick and tired of it and just, you know, turn their back on me when I need them? And so I feel like you have some fears here. And these are, like, very deep-rooted fears about your own capabilities and I feel like your own strength, your own capabilities, your own mortality. Um, you know, th that's what I'm feeling. And of course, for a Scorpio person, um, talking about the things that you're, uh, that, 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 that scares you, You've, you guys have been through a lot, okay? Your sign rules the 8th house and the 8th house is like, I, I look at it as like a bucket of tar, okay? It's, it's dark, it's pitch black, it's viscous, it's, uh, it smells. The eighth house, is it, it drags up all of the things that makes make us feel very, very afraid, okay? It is the house, um, in astrology, it's the house of um, rebirth, regeneration, Okay, so it's like having to, you know, um, dive into the underworld and then come out clean, okay? Having to like bathe yourself in that bucket of tar and then come out sparkling clean. That's what it feels like. You guys have been through, you know, periods and bouts where you've had to like reinvent yourself, okay? Reinvent your identity, um, you have to have gone through, like many of you have gone through, really intense experiences. And you came out okay. And so, because you've been through so much, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thoughts. Um, I feel like because you've been through so much, you know yourself really well. You know your breaking point. You know where your limits are. And you know what you want, okay? It's like hardship builds character. But I feel like with this person, the way they show up here, eight of feathers, it's like a little mouse. It's, it's very cute. It's very pure. It's very innocent, possibly very young. So there could potentially be an age difference. You're looking at this person as like someone who's a little bit skittish, okay? So mouse, mice, they, they're a little bit nervous, okay? Um, this is also someone who's very resourceful, okay? But you're looking at this playful, cute little mouse, and you're just like, um, you haven't gone, been through what I've been through. You haven't been tested. You don't really know yourself well. So I feel in a way you might be underestimating this person, okay? And so you're kind of wondering, you know, I've been through a lot. I know what I want. They haven't been through half what I've been through. They might not know what they want. And so I feel like you might also be doubting this person in terms of like, well, maybe they want more. Maybe they'll change their mind. Maybe they'll get bored. Maybe they'll get tired of me or, you know, whatever the situation is. I just feel like you know where you stand, but you're not really sure you know where the other person stands. You see the best in them. But you also, I feel like a very strong, protective, paternal vibe in here where there may be an age difference and somebody feels like paternalistic or maternalistic and somebody feels very protective over the other person. And so uh, what I'm sensing here is keep in mind, remind yourself, okay? You guys are on equal footing here, okay? This is like regardless of age, regardless of life experiences, these two animals are like the same age, it, the same soul group, the same, it, it's like you, you guys have, um, let's say, if you're an old soul and you have, you know, reincarnated like a hundred lifetimes, they're also an old soul. So spiritually, you guys are on the same footing, 
okay you guys are from the same like soul group you guys are from the same group and so even if physically they're in front of you and they look very young and it seems like they haven't really lived they're also a very old soul and so you can trust what's in front of you you can trust in this connection and you can trust that if you ask for help they're gonna be there to lend a helping hand okay they're gonna help you down that cliff and they're going to fight alongside you and they're going to protect you and so I feel like this is the beginning okay the beginning of um, putting yourself in a place where you don't have to be the caretaker you don't have to be the one constantly pushing the relationship forward somebody is doing that for you or at least you know two people I see um, who are definitely on equal footing and then I'm also feeling um, whatever that's um, that's keeping you very hesitant about embarking on a new phase a lot of it is unfounded fears and a lot of it is coming through from your end it's not really grounded in reality does that make sense and so maybe you have to kind of like get over this or somehow work this out of your system because I feel like it might it might ruin a good thing okay it it might disallow you from trusting in the connection it might um, make you turn down a very good offer or it might keep you mired in a state of like disbelief um, negative thoughts like negative thoughts you know like um, well they're here today but are they gonna be here five years from now ten years from now so whatever it is it's very internal to you Scorpios and it's something that you need to work through okay it's not fair to project these fears onto your partner or onto the person you're dealing with or onto this situation does that make sense so I would urge you to try your best to somehow purge this and the best way to counter negative thoughts is to think positively okay so that's the only advice that I can give and so we're moving on um, we're moving on and uh, I do see another person on this side so let me talk about that I feel like some of you are dealing with this and things are all gravy you just need to kind of like uh, work through some of your uh, fears when it comes to um, vulnerability when it comes to what when it comes to like joint finances like uh, sharing assets and, and money with another person um, I feel like some of you might have been burned in the past uh, lending out money and it was never returned and I'm talking like huge sums of money to somebody that you really care about because you cared about them and I feel like you know you really really worked hard to secure that money to help them and then it was never returned and so it left a bitter taste in your mouth and now the, the thoughts of like having to share a bank account with another person I just feel like it takes you to a dark place just thinking about it and then I also feel um, there might have been you know in in the past you gave your all to a situation you gave everything every piece of yourself every fiber of your being and I'm looking at this armadillo and it doesn't have any hairs in it okay any hairs on it it doesn't have any fur it's like naked and and out in the elements that's what it feels like exposed has nothing and that situation didn't work out and now you're very skeptical about investing and loving and opening up and giving so much of yourself and so you're metering you're keeping a quota you're holding back once again these are issues that are very personal to each of you who might be watching this and so I would just say you know this is a new scenario here this is a new situation this is a new person and so you know don't shut yourself out don't be your worst enemy and don't get in your own way because I feel like it's disallowing you from really enjoying the blessings that are coming into your life okay so 
let's move that aside. Um, it keeps drawing me back. So I want to just uh, separate it and talk about the things that are coming in from this end. I do see some of you are like dealing with this and you kind of need to work that out. And then another person, uh, uh, there's another person here that some of you are dealing with. You could be dealing with both, but I feel like the energy is separated. So, I'm sorry, let me take a sip of water. Okay, so... There's a person that is heavily thinking about you, okay? Um, I, I don't know if they have moved recently. I don't know if they have moved on, like if they physically have moved to a new city, a new location, and there's a geographical distance, or if they have moved on, like they, they're dating somebody else now, they're in a new relationship. So there's somebody that has moved on, like you, you might have broken up with this person and they might have moved on. And I feel like you, you wish the best for them, like you think about them, you care about them a lot, okay? And I feel like for many of you, this might be like somebody you were once married to, you once lived with. This was somebody who was very, very significant in your life email or trying to look for them on social media or trying to hunt them down. I feel that, you know, you think about this person and you think about. Uh, the way that I see this playing out is um, the the love and the support coming through from this person is very unconditional. They're a really good person, and I feel like they really, really care about you. Not only do they care about you, they're a very good person. So they will never leave anyone high and dry. They would never leave anyone stranded. Okay, on top of that. And the fact that they care about you, they would never leave you in that condition let alone, you know, anybody else. So I feel like you're in good hands no matter how you look at it, okay? Even if the love is gone out of the relationship, even though if they're no longer in love with you or you're no longer in love with them, they're still a very good person. And so they will never leave you high and dry. And I feel like you just need to kind of like keep that in mind, okay? I hope the reading resonates with you and then I hope it is helpful for you as we navigate the energies of February because I feel like these um, these demons are going to you know, start creeping in and you're going to feel a little bit insecure and you're going to, um, you're going to need to, you know, fight them off, okay? Okay, so whatever you can do to do that, if you need that reassurance, 